and uh, uh, finally we get to finite elements so finite elements uh, is actually a pretty deep topic and uh, uh, even at MIT there are several different classes uh, different uh, subjects just on finite element methods right actually are uh, uh, these these classes are actually different from each other uh, specializing in different aspects of finite element methods so so what we learned over here is really just the, the very basics and the first thing about I mean without knowing function space and the basis it's really impossible to even talk about finite elements so that's the first thing you need to know what is a, a function space a function space is really just a, a a linear space right you learn in linear algebra but except for in the linear space as opposed to points you have functions the functions has to satisfy the same type of laws any linear space has to satisfy you add two functions, the sum has to be in the space. You scale a function, the scaled function has to be in the same space. Right? The negative of the function has to be in the same space. The function plus is negative should give you a zero function, which is in the space. So, so this is a function space. And uh, uh, unlike in linear algebra, uh, the, the, uh, most of the linear space you deal with in linear algebra is actually finite dimensional. Function spaces are, uh, are, unless in rare cases, are infinite dimensional, right? For example, the space of all continuous functions, it's infinite dimensional. And the computers usually are not very good at dealing with infinite dimensional stuff. So finite elements restricts the infinite dimensional space into a finite dimensional space. By introducing the elements so uh, so as soon as you go into a finite dimensional space you can have what's called a basis so let's say uh, if X is a function space and uh, by the way uh, some people also call it functional space uh, because uh, well uh, in functional analysis, uh, that's uh, that's basically the kind of space you deal with uh, every day. So, uh, so x is a is a function of functional space, and uh, uh, a basis. Let's say phi one etc to phi n is a set. It's a subset. Let's say subset of x. Such that any f within X can be written as uh, can be written actually uniquely as f equal to summation of a i phi i i goes from one to n. Okay, so so two things is that one is that any f can be represented as a linear combination of these bases. So that provides a minimum requirement on how many fees you have to have. If you lose even one of these fees, you are not going to be able to represent some of these Fs, some of part of the space. Okay. And two is that uniquely, right? That provides a second requirement that imposes the maximum size of the basis. If, if you have a basis like that, and if you insert another element into the basis, then you can show that uh, this representation will no longer be unique. So, so this can and uniquely basically constrains the basis to be a fixed number set. So, so that's uh, you, you can you can prove that uh, if you have one basis and you have a different basis I mean basis doesn't have to be unique but even if you have two sets of bases the number of elements in the basis is the same for the same function space and because of that property 
the basis provides you a tool to define the dimension of the space. So really, what does it mean by the dimension of the big X? It's the number of elements you have to have in any basis of the space, right? So n is dimension. Okay, right. So so this is the basically mathematical fundamental of uh, of finite elements. Practically, how do we come up with the function space and its basis? In this lecture, we only studied one particular method of uh, restraining a infinite dimensional space into a finite dimensional and come up with one type of basis functions. What is that? Yeah, uh, the basis are nodal and the space is piecewise linear and continuous functions. We had a demonstration of uh, piecewise linear but not necessarily continuous functions, but like uh, what we really started are piecewise linear and continuous functions. So the type of functions that are like that. So uh, these are basically splitting the entire domain into what's called the elements. It's the same type of thing as the volumes in finite volume, but uh, now we call them elements. Okay. In one dimension, actually, it's exactly the same. There is no difference. In two and three dimensions, uh, the type of elements you can have really depends on what type of basis functions you want to have. But in one dimension, there is no difference. So uh, on each element, the function is only allowed to be a straight line. Okay, And in between two adjacent elements, the function has to be continuous. So these two requirements it's sufficient to constrain an infinite dimensional space into a finite dimensional space. And if you have one, two, three, up to n elements, the dimension of the space is going to be n plus one if the boundary conditions are not constrained. It's n if one of the boundaries are constrained, and it's going to be n minus one if both boundaries are constrained. All right. So this is a. Uh, um, this is the space and what is what is the uh, what is the most convenient basis function on this space that's the nodal basis we looked at so the nodal basis says that uh, uh, the nodal basis are such that each basis function is equal to 1, okay, it's actually equal to 1, it's not like equal to a finite number, it's equal to 1, at 1 and only 1 of these nodes, and it's equal to 0 at every other node. So for example, the first function is equal to 1 over here and 0 at every other node, right? And because phi actually has to be a subset of x, so phi each phi has to be also a piecewise linear and continuous function. And if it's piecewise con linear and continuous function, given the value at these nodes, then I know exactly what that function is, right? It has to be going sloping down, and it has to stay zero over here, because at every node, it is equal to zero. Okay, and another one that is equal to one at the second grid and zero, everywhere else has to be like that. And the third one has to be like zero and uh, that, etc. right? If you have a left boundary condition, then uh, the, the, the coefficient on the first uh, uh, basis function is fixed, right? Otherwise, uh, all these uh, basis functions is gonna have an unknown coefficient. And uh, in finite element, you solve for these coefficients. Okay, so this is a this is a, a function spaces and basis as a particular example.